There was a time when college football, much bigger than the NFL and pro football, Jim Thorpe, legendary college player, Olympian, right. decathlon, greatest athlete in the world, but then he says, I'm gonna play professional football, and that changed the arc of the NFL. And said, I'm gonna be a professional football player. It's amazing. When, when that, that profession wasn't seen as the way it is now. Right. You know, and, and he took the NFL to another level. Right. And there's an iconic figure. Didn't even have a shoe deal either. He didn't. I mean, no, no sponsorship, anything. No, no. They were ripping him off. <laughs> I think came back from the Olympics, right? Yes. And then yeah. started to become yeah. a professional football player. World's greatest athlete. Yeah. Well, I'm always into like, I'm always into talking about certain body parts that make players great, right? I mean, you know, hey, right here, look at the size of these arms and these hands here. I mean, no wonder these guys could move some people around. Chris, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> not bad actually. You got more muscles in your arms than I thought. That's not bad. I, I mean, hand size. That's another thing you always talk about. Quarterbacks, yeah. defensive linemen. All right, let me. Sacks. Falk. Willie McGinnis, he's got some big hands. Yeah, See, Willie's Warren, got some huge hands. Warren didn't really have big hands for him. Right, 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 not at all. No, he yeah, does. Those are big hands. Yeah, <laughs> they are. Marshall that's, Falk. That's a good hand. Ooh, I don't know how big it is. That's a good hand. <laughs> that's a soft hand right exactly. there. I mean, as soft, soft as they come. That's some gentle hands right there. <laughs> Unbelievable. Whoa, what so is this? this is what we're talking about, legs. I mean, I can fit my whole body. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> who is that? Oh, Gilbert. We Gilbert Brown. Him. We drafted him. Are you I, serious? Yeah. And this guy, Leonard Davis. Leonard Davis. How big I went was to school. He when you Everything's him. big in Texas. Wow. What? <laughs> I went to school with Leonard Davis at Texas. Look at this. And he talked like this, <laughs> so he'd be like, <laughs> "Hey," he actually said to me, "Like, you know, I can actually hear you, Chris, over the crowd noise because your voice is kind of squeaky." <laughs> and I was like, "Well, thanks. I think that's a compliment." <laughs> the biggest human I've ever seen. I can fit my whole body in this. He's the biggest human <laughs> ever. He is. That is ridiculous. I mean, that is unbelievable. <laughs> Leonard Davis, and he was the 19th kid out of 19. Can you imagine being yeah. the mom and had to squeeze him out, number 19? Yeah. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> yeah, I know you would. That's your job. <laughs> and then the bus. Yeah, how about Bettis? Yeah. All right. He, running back's legs shouldn't look like the offensive line. <laughs> like 350 Think right about now. trying to hit him. But, but le legs and butt. I mean, come on. That's, that's the, the game. That's right? the game, right? That's I mean, a, you, you used to have them. You used to back in the day. I'm, I'm old, man. I'm 50 now. <laughs> Here we go, coach. Your old shoulder pads and helmet. Uh, <laughs> can you imagine playing in that? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen this contraption. <laughs> I've never that seen is. that either. That looks like it's from like uh, that movie with Anthony Hopkins. That's crazy. Long ways from the caps we saw this morning. Right? Uh, now it's yeah. protect the head. Those guys, uh, they got it going. Set the tone. I mean, it looks like they're wearing a corset almost. I mean, it's like a woman's, I, I can't even imagine putting that on. I love the helmet up there on the right. Right? right? <laughs> got the ear, the ear flaps. flaps. Yeah, right. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> look, at the, look how small those shoulder pads are. That's in, it's insane. This is the first contract. Pudge Heffelfinger was the first $500 professional football bonus. player. Gotcha. Yeah. They used wow. to bring these ringers in. And he was one of the ringers, and he was one of the first guys. They used to pay guys board, and then they'd go double board. That's kind of how they paid guys. But then this is the first contract that says, hey, this guy's actually getting paid money to play ball. Allegheny Athletic Association. Look at you. See, I know you've been here before. Here's, the, here, here, here's the argument. Yeah. The argument is what won in Pudge Heffelfinger's day still wins today. Uniform is different. Equipment's different. Style of football is different. But they blocked well, they tackled well, they took care of the ball. All those things that, that worked in 1892 right. work in 2022. It's the difference. That's a coach talking fundamentals. Yeah, right, you hear him? Mm -hmm. Heffelfinger. 70s. Definitely uh -oh, brings coach. back some memories for me. The AFC was man, dominant at that time, but I have to tell you, this was the best team in that decade. You always talk about Mr. Rooney. What did he mean to you, coach? Special. I mean, you see that, that smile. Everybody wanted to get those trophies for him. No, no question about it. But Miami won two. You know, Raiders were tremendous. They won one. We won four. If you, had, if you had to choose one team out of the four that won it, who's the team with the best? <laughs> <laughs> I'd have, well, man. The 78 team, I think, was the most balanced. It had great defense and offense, but that 74 defense 
That uh, was the best dig. Yeah. Holding right. OJ under 50 yards and then holding the Raiders and the Vikings under 50 combined. Right. Hard to top that. Now, he was one of my favorites right here as a kid. How good was he? The, you would love him because the bigger the game, he was going to show out. If you didn't need him, it wasn't that big of a deal. Mm. But those, those big moments, you could count on Lynn making some plays. Mm. But the, the competitiveness of that era, you know, we're always going to end up playing the Raiders or the Dolphins, end up playing the Cowboys in, in the Super Bowl. And you kind of knew the teams you were going to play, and there was no free agency, so you played against the same guys. It was personal. Personal. Right? Yeah. Year yeah. after year. I didn't feel to kick the Cowboys, but. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> uh, Dwight White had the best line. Dwight said, the Cowboys are Neiman Marcus. We're J.C. Penney. But with all the money we made beating the Cowboys, we can shop at Neiman Marcus. <laughs> I love it. Did, did you realize all those guys were going to be Hall of Famers back then? You know, you really did. You did. When you're out there on the field playing against those guys, and, and they're, they're the best. And so it's, you know. Two Tall Jones and Harvey Martin and Roger Staubach and Tony Dorsett and Drew Pearson. And you say, man, these guys are really good. But then we've got Lynn Swan and Jack Hamm and Jack Lambert and Joe Green. I just Bradshaw. keep thinking about the number of guys you had on your defense who were in the Hall of Fame. It's incredible. We did my rookie year. Ten guys on the defense in the Pro Bowl. You told me that, yeah. yep. And you just you say, how can guys that in the Pro Bowl? Was there any like team friction ever? Like, is would that like you never hear anything as far as like, you know any players or the offense being jealous of the defense uh, or anything? Coach None Noel of that? was the best. No just, diva receivers with Swan or Stallworth <laughs> or nothing. No, he wow. didn't. He didn't allow that, and the guys fostered that. I mean, if you want to win, you, you want to beat the Cowboys, you want to beat the Raiders. We got to be together. We we got to be unified, and and we were. All right, one more. I got one more real question. This real. I'm, I'm dying to know. Is who'd you guys hate more, the Raiders or the Cowboys? I think the Raiders, because you're playing them every you year, all every the time. Year. You had to beat them to get to the Super Bowl. Right. Uh, and there was, some, there was some tough battles going on. Wow. This is the 93 season, and this is the second consecutive Super Bowl the Cowboys win. If you remember this, Coach, uh, it was a week from the NFC Championship game to the Super Bowl. Mm. Troy Aikman gets a concussion the week before, so he's not quite right. So we relied on this guy leading rusher in NFL history, and the game was close at halftime, and then we literally handed the ball to him, I think eight, nine, ten times in a row, kind of broke the game open, and, uh, and eventually beat him pretty handily. But uh, it was not easy early on, but handed to that guy, and good things happened. He was the guy, didn't he, the bigger the game, the more you knew he was going to show up, right? Incredible. My question to you is, what do the Cowboys need to do in order to get back to this? <laughs> Now, present well, day. if you think about it, we talked about coaches, the Hall of Famers on that Pittsburgh team, Hall of Famers on this team, right? You think about the quarterback, the running back, the receiver, you know, guys on defense. So some amazing players during that era. But, but what you said about Emmitt, I think, is real. Every one of those guys, those big time players in the big time moments made the plays. They always had their best games when they needed to have them. So I think that for any team is really what you need to do. You get to the game, now what do we need to do to, to play our best to win it? This team did that better than any team I've ever been around. And those great players, they want the ball in those, oh those situations, in those big moments. They, they embrace it. it. Yes, they right. embrace it. Th that was, you guys were down what, 13-6 at halftime, right? Yeah. Is it was it weird? I mean, one year you play them and it's Aikman throwing bombs everywhere against them, and the next year you can't throw it and you got to run the ball like that. And you know, like, did you did you feel an extra bit of personalness because you played the same team twice two years in a row? Yeah, fifty-two seventeen the year before right, in Pasadena. Right. And yeah. So now you come back and you're in this dogfight with these guys, and I'll never forget the halftime. Coach Johnson, we all go in there and there's a little bit. Hey, we're in the Super Bowl and we're down at halftime calm, cool, collected. It wasn't like hee hee ha, you know, getting on anybody. It was just, hey, let's get to work. Here's what we got to do. And the one thing that came up schematically in this game is we tried some zone runs, some weren't very good. Let's get to the gap run game. We did that over and over and over again. And this guy in that offensive line took over. Pulling some guards and kicking yeah, some people absolutely. out and did that, yeah. But I know for me, playing against you guys, th that confidence level, it seems like this group didn't think they were yeah. going to lose. Yeah. And 
practice so competitively. You talked about that with your team in Pittsburgh. The practices were so com constantly competing against each other. So when you got in these moments, guys embraced it. They thrived and they always played their best. All right, guys, the most incredible catch of Super Bowl history. I tried everything. It is incredible. Could, brother. I tried everything I, feel, I could. I feel bad. Coach, I thought I ripped it off his how, head. How does the ball not come out there? It really is unreal, man. And you see my left arm, I was trying to grab him, pull it down at the same time. What do you think, Jason? Do you have any nightmares about that whole thing? Yes. It's one of the I, most I just iconic. got over it last year, yeah. <laughs> so I'm okay it's now. It's like one of the most iconic plays in NFL well, history. He's going to go over that, right? backwards. How, how does the ball not hit the ground? I, I, yeah, well, Tyree is from Jersey, and, you know, they make him a little stronger. <laughs> <than Jersey guys. laughs> <Some toughness. laughs> Did you guys have any thought that you could lose that game? You're 17 and 0. We were averaging over 35 points a game. We, we felt like um, we were going to come in, score a bunch of points. We felt very confident on defense but they were able to run the football and make a few big plays, and this play really was the catalyst to the, to the championship. Does that annoy you? You won two Super Bowls and you're always gonna talk about this. I'm with you all the time. You always have to talk about this. Nobody ever brings up the two Super Bowls that you played awesome. Man, it's all part of it, you Man, know? I um, know. But at least I can say I'm in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, he was. <laughs> I am not. Yeah, you're, in you're, you're gonna be getting a jacket for here pretty soon. And too, the crazy right? thing about it, that, that's not your man, right? That wasn't my man. That yeah, was a Santi yeah. Samuels man. <laughs> yes. Yes. Come Here comes Dover trying to help out. But I got to make that play, you know. I rooted for you most Sundays, but not that one. Thank you. Sorry, Sorry. that was the G-Man. I had to go with the G-Man that day. How about this guy behind you? How young does he look right there? Oh, my God. That, now, this is before TB12 and all the healthy stuff, but Tom was a bad dude, really smart, great leader. Um, he looks like he's 15 years old right now. I know. He looks very young. He's, he still looks the same. Yeah. He does. I mean, he really does. That's the Rams Super Bowl, right? That's that game. Yeah. It's crazy. Who would have thought that guy right there? Think about him right there and what he's going to accomplish. Yeah. Right. You reflect back. Now it's 20 years later, right? Right. right? <laughs> I mean, people thought they were crazy. You they were like, "What? Bad dreams, isn't it? I've had some bad dreams. <laughs> I bet you have. I bet you have." Well, then how about at the end after they score, the deep corner route to Moss? You guys almost still get it on the last drive, right? Still had a chance. He rolled right and threw like a 75-yarder. <laughs> but props to the Giants, man. You got to give it up, man. They stepped up and they just kicked our butts. Hey, Coach, how much of an honor is it for you to have played with or against so many of these guys as an Hall of Fame? It's crazy. It's amazing. You think of that and you can't even believe you're with some of these guys, how good they were, you know. To be spoken of in the same tone, it's just crazy. You know, Jason, we're talking and come here several times as an assistant coach. You see your teammates in, you see guys you played against. You never, ever think you're going to be there. And hey, at the end of the day, my boy Tony Dungy is in the Hall of Fame right here. Look at this, man. Come on, man. And they gave you hair, coach. It's just a win win. It, it is so crazy. You know, I come in here and I saw Coach Knowles, and to, to see mine here, you, you can't even. It's beyond your wildest dreams. Beyond, yeah. yeah. The Lord blesses you more than you could ever imagine, and th this is one of them. You're obviously here for a reason. You've impacted so many players and coaches and so many people in this great game, and it's fun to be standing here. <laughs> it is, absolutely. <laughs> well, but you, you mentioned that, and I see all the other people around me, teammates, guys I coached, guys I coached with, and that's, that's the reason you're in. Yeah. You know? I it's a heck of a class, too. <laughs> I know. I know. Right right in the yeah. Middle. Yeah. Orlando. Hey, you Pace, got your Brett boy Barr. Bill Polian here. Yeah. You got Marvin yeah. Harrison right yeah. next to you. Did that make it special, like a little extra special that year it to really, have one of your guys in it, there with you? It really did. Yeah, yeah it really did. Um, but I remember thinking all the guys who were, well, he's going to get in. Marvin's going to get in. You know, Favre's going to get in. No way I'm going to make it this right, year. But right. it was just, yeah, it was really, I know really your dad good. is really proud. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, you do. You think about those, your, your parents, your high school coach, uh, your college teammates, you know, all, all the guys that, that poured into you. Um, I had Donnie Shell present me because Ooh, he was one of my he, favorites. Well, he taught me how to play. I, he was my roommate and he showed me I was a converted quarterback playing defense and he taught me how to be a man and a, and a safety. And I said, you got to present me, man. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.